Hello everyone and welcome to another quick guide. Now this one is going to be all about the housing system for the Elder Scrolls Online. So I have received so many requests on how to do this. I was honestly surprised. I looked up on Google and was like, wait, nobody's made a guide on how to actually do this. How is that possible? So lo and behold, here it is. Here's the guide to do so. I was wondering why nobody understood how to do this. Um, I'm going to make that life easier for everybody. So this guide is purely about how to use the housing system itself, where to get certain things, how the hell to make some interesting structures, and how to make your house look aesthetically pleasing rather than total doo-doo when you are using the housing system in Elder Scrolls Online. So this video might not be for everybody, but if you have ever considered using it, I would probably say it is one of the coolest systems I've ever seen in any game. It's very, very nice. You can do loads of stuff for this if you are a bit more creative than myself. My girlfriend's real good with this stuff. I'm awful. But I do know how to use the systems. That's what we're here to talk about. And that's what I'm going to explain to you guys today. So first things first, what you're going to need to get yourself is a house. Now, obviously, these are really expensive. If you are not rich, you can get a tiny little house. But you can still do some creative stuff for those for free from the starter Housing quest located in Glenumbra, Stoneforce, and I believe it's Auradon. Um, There is a little quest in there. It's related to the pub and you'll get a single room. It's nothing big, but you can still do some sort of thing there. But if you do watch some of my money making guides, you're probably pretty rich by now. And then you're going to be able to do some proper stuff in that housing system to get some real sexy results. So, assuming you've got yourself a nice house, whichever one you like. Pretty good value one, I believe, is in Strozmakai. Don't quote me on this. Let's quickly check. It is indeed. Hunting's Palatial Hall. That's one of the best value for the size you'll get. You could also buy this for crowns or you could buy it for in-game gold. You've got everything ready. I'm going to explain how we can do everything in the system. So, first thing first, the houses. As I've discussed, you can buy this for gold. You can get it for free from a quest for a tiny one. Or you can buy it for crowns. It's that easy. Once you've got those, you can enter the house and you can do everything you like with it. Now, I'll come back quickly on how to use the actual housing system, but there are a few more things open world that we're going to need to discuss, and that's how we're going to get some very cheap furnishings and some very rare furnishings alike. So before we do anything related to that, let's quickly look down the map. I'm going to show you one of these examples, and we'll show you an easier one, and then I'll tell you where each of the individual town's specific vendors are. The content of these vendors do vary a little bit. It's not going to be the same for every vendor. That's important to note that you are going to need to have a bit of a look around because if you want to get the best creation, a lot of the materials can be very similar, but with a slight change, some can be darker, lighter, for instance, different colors, slightly different setup, different reflection, um, sorry, mirror images, I mean, basically. But in the end, you don't have to use it for what it's intended for. So I've seen tons of great stuff, mazes, parkours, just a general house. Some people use platforms and all in completely different ways to the intended way and that sort of thing. So for the very first vendor that we're going to show you, I'm going to port to Cold Harbor. And this, there's an obvious reason for doing this. This one has an extra vendor over every other town. And then I'll quickly show you where all the other town vendors are. If this obviously is not that useful for you uh, so far, and you're more interested in how you actually edit the stuff, you are, of course, welcome to skip through and find that. I will link all the stuff below as long as I remember to do so. But first things first, we're going to go to Cicero's Food, and this is located in Cold Harbor, just east of the Way Shrine, next to the bank. And this is going to give us our example of the vendors. So for each town, there is going to be a specific achievement vendor, a normal housing vendor, and in the case of this one, also the luxury housing vendor. So the achievement vendor first will have a different set of loot for every individual town. And this will depend on the achievements you unlock. Now you do have to have the achievement on the character you're buying from. So let's assume that you are wanting to craft this stuff on non-main. Well, simply relog to your main, get the achievement that you want. If you don't have it, you can aim it, aim for it. It's a nice goal to go for. You've got the achievement, bam. You can then buy that gear on that character, bank it, and transfer it to your other character to use. So it doesn't lock you out just because it's not your crafting character. The other vendor we can see is going to be a normal vendor. I can't actually see him in right now. I don't know why he isn't spawned. But that's just going to have all sorts of things, uh, sort of bricks, plants, some basic plants. They are going to be very cheap. So if you are poorer and you're looking to do something quite basic, it's a nice way to get hold of stuff because housing is expensive. 
The top of the cake for expensive is gonna be a luxury furnishing vendor. These get really expensive some weeks, but this stuff only comes on each of the weekends and every weekend it will vary and you're gonna have some different things. Now, what we can do to see those before buying it is click on it and we can preview. So for instance, this is some stupid tiny barrel pouring water. This is a massive brass fountain. Uh, and this would be like a sigil stab. The list goes on, it varies each weekend between the hours of midnight Friday all the way to the end of Sunday and the start of Monday. So there's different stuff each week. Check them out as you go. If there's something really good, they generally go up in price after a little bit. So you could obviously always buy a few to save up. Kind of up to you if you do that. But they are only here for a short time. So if there's something you're interested in, get the goal fast, check out my money making guides and then you are good to go. So that gives you a general idea of how to get those furnishings. Briefly, while I ride back to my house, I'm going to explain how to get hold of some of the others. So most easy is go to a guild store. Now, when you go to a guild store, you can get furnishings in two different ways. Buy the furnishing or buy the recipe to craft the furnishing. If you are not going to do much housing, I would strongly advise buying the item rather than the recipe if it's a more expensive recipe. Because some of them do get pretty pricey. And the furnishing itself is not that big a margin. If you think you're going to do maybe more than one house, it's probably worth buying the recipe if you can craft it. Because again, even then, if you're just buying the items, it will add up quickly. Housing is an expensive thing. You're going to need gold to do it. Unless, of course, you go the other route, which is to go into the crown store. And from the crown store, you can buy whatever furnishing you so wish to use and place it in your house as per normal. Now, I'll show you how to do all of that placing, etc. in a minute but it's really not that complicated. Now, once I'm through this loading screen, one more thing I'll do before I show you how to actually use the housing editor is quickly show you where each of those achievement vendors are because these can vary town by town. So first of all, Alakir. This is gonna be located in the center, a bit out of the way at Cosenset Town, just northeast of Hoondings Way Shrine. So it's gonna be in here and it's gonna be in the pub. Or on very easy, it's gonna be in Skywatch down at the pub again. Bankerai, slap bang in Evermore, straight away from the Way Shrine, just by here. Clockwork City is going to be located straight next to the Way Shrine, about two steps away. Cold Harbor, I've already shown you, is in the Grocers. Craglawn is going to be located in the Woodworking Place in the main town of Belcalf. Deshaun is going to be located a bit sneaky here. You want to go into the bank, bottom floor, right hand side, and you'll see him in there. East March, in the middle of nowhere now, we're going to go down to Fort Ammo by Fort Ammo Way Shrine. And just across the water, you'll see him. No idea what his place there, but it is. Glenumbra is going to be located within the uh, pub. Gold Coast is going to be in Kvach, the north town. And it's just going to be located to the northwest over here. So a little out of the way, just west of the pub. Gratwood, very easy to see almost straight away in front of you from the Way Shrine, first thing you should see. Green Shade is gonna be located in Marbrook, just to the north of the Way Shrine up the stairs. Then we go over to Hughes Bane. A little harder to find this one. You wanna go into the town, turn left, and you're gonna find it just to the north edge of the town. They are right next to a fence. So if you see a fence with a little entrance to like a courtyard, there you are, there's your vendors. Malleable Tour next is gonna be in the middle of nowhere in Volkswasten. Hope I pronounced that right. Um, right next to the same way shrine, a little north, again, this pub icon, pretty common for these things. Reaper's March, pretty easy, but not marked on the map. So you want to go into Rule Cart, and it's just to the right of the Dominion Navigator, this little cart, and south of the bar. So straight between those two. Riven Spa is again in the pub. DC kind of has an addiction with putting these things in pubs, so there you go. Shadowfen is going to be located again in the middle of nowhere at Alton Coromont, next to the same name Way Shrine. And you're going to need to go around and up the boat. And it's going to be on the second floor of the boat. Stone Force, easy one to find here. Ebonheart Centre. Stormhaven is going to be right outside the bank, just before the bridge. Uh, you'll see it sort of next to this town. Rift is going to be located in Riften, straight away from the Way Shrine. Cross the first bridge and it'll be straight away on your left. Waterfell in the main town, located just inside one of the buildings next to the Mage Guild. And then finally, Rothgar is instantly outside the Way Shrine within the main town or Sinium Way Shrine. So that's how you get all the achievement vendor stuffs. That's how you're going to get some of the rarer furnishings. In the end, if you're short on money, you're probably not going to be going for those. But it can be nice if you go for a real fancy house. And at some point, if you guys want to see it, I could do a tour of my house as well for a separate video and that way you guys can see that stuff. 
So let's go on to how we actually use the systems of the house. Now, first of all, I'm going to move somewhere out of the way, just so we don't get anyone interrupting this. You never know. I'm going to move to an object that we're going to be able to move in a sec, though obviously I can move almost everything in this house. First thing you're going to need to do is enter the housing editor. To do that, you press F5. That's your auto keybind. You can obviously change that if you so wish. And then you want to go and go into browse. Now, you can obviously select individual pieces. So if I wanted to, I could go to a piece, click it, and then just wiggle that about wherever I want it. Um, and you can also present to go to the entrance, but nine times out of 10, if not more, when you're going into setting, you're going to be going into browse because this is where everything is. So first things first, we're going to go into your settings. A lot of you guys will probably share a house with friends and craft with friends because of the price. So we're going to start off in the settings tab of housing. And here you're going to see all of these settings. Firstly, general, what this is going to allow you to do is allow everybody visit by changing your primary residence to make primary residence. And when you have that, if somebody wants to port to your house, they go onto your friends, you can right click that person's name, and then you can visit primary residence and that will port you to their town. So very easy to do that once you have set it. If it is not their primary residence or not your primary residence, they will only be able to get in if you're already inside the house. You're gonna to want to set your default visitor access to visitor just so everybody can get it. If you don't want people to be able to get in without you putting a name, go on to no access, but that's really gonna depend on what you're doing. Next, you want to go down to your visitors list. Now this is not just visitors. So assuming you've made it so everybody connects to your house, which I advise, you can then set some more people as decorators. And these are the people who can actually edit in your house. Let me just tell you this, if you're going for a big house, you're not gonna to wanna to do it alone because you'll be there all day, all month, all year, the list goes on. It's a long job to make a really sexy house. So get some friends, work together. And all you're gonna to wanna to do is go on to add player. So if I wanted to add at Linanja, I would type that name, go down to permissions, set decorator and accept, apply all houses, bam. And they can now edit in all of my houses. Ban list, home sweet home of the idiots. So if somebody is causing the drama, if somebody simply is messing about, Boom, that's what it's there for. Slap them on there. Why would you want people who are messing you about being able to use your house? And then guild visitors is going to allow certain guilds to visit. So in this case, I've got my trade guilds, friends of our trade guild, etc. So that those guilds can always access the house when they like. Um, should I ever put this on no access. But at the moment, everybody can access my house anyway, as long as they have a port into it in the first place. That's that settings tab. Before we move on to actually moving objects and all of that, I'm going to quickly show you the thing on the left called house information. This is also pretty important. So you're going to see all of these different labels for furnishings types. Traditional furnishings is first. This is going to be almost every furnishing. Structures, anything you can use, anything you can climb, objects, statues, plants, you name it, it's probably going to fall into this category. So this total represents the amount we're allowed in our house. And different house sizes will have different amounts. You can see it very easily by accessing this tab, again, by pressing F5 and examining how much space you have left. So do check that first. If you have ESO Plus, you will double it. So the biggest house you can get has 350. I have ESO Plus, so I get 700. Nice and easy there. Special furnishings, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea if these even exist in the game. I have never dropped one, but I could be wrong. Maybe they do exist, who knows? They could be crown store only. I've never found out what that is. So maybe someone could shed some light, I don't know. I don't know what they are. Collectible furnishings are gonna be all sorts of things related to some specific achievements and farmed from Undaunted Dungeons. So for instance, if I was to go on my objects that I still have, we could go down to the Undaunted Trophies, which you would get for finishing dungeons, and you could see a couple there and I'd be able to put them up to a total of 80. Once we reach 80, we can no longer place them. Special collectibles are a little different. So these are gonna be things like mounts, pets, though some of those fall a little differently. But more often than not, these are going to be related to something you can use. So bankers, merchants, fences, those are your big top dogs there. That sort of thing, very common. They are going to be your bread and butter. Now you can see, again, I did mention primary residence, but just to go over that again, we have obviously set that and that is going to allow everybody in here. But you can also see underneath that the population. So the houses have a cap of the amount of people visit. I'm almost certain that's the same for every house, but let's just assume it is. But obviously we need to keep track of that should we go for any housing events. So don't invite too many people if it's gonna be a problem. Most of the time, 24, that's a lot of people. You should be fine in terms of that population. Right, so now let's go on to actually moving an object. So what we're gonna do first of all is taking an object up because knowing me, more often than not, you place an object once, 
it's going disastrously wrong and you're gonna to have to pick it up. So let's start with actually fixing a mess first. And to do that, we're gonna go on to retrieve, which is the third tab at the top right. Uh, quickly before we mention that, obviously you can purchase crown items here. Most of these are purchasable in game as well. It's just another way and they can also be bought for gems in some cases. But let's go on retrieve. You can go down to any item, but the biggest thing to note here is how many different types there are. There are a lot of types. So when you actually buy an items for your house, I cannot advise enough, keep track of what the name of the item is. So you can search it in the search bar. So let's assume I want a plank, I can search that. Or write down the items as you go, write down for instance, structure, planks, rough plank, narrow. That way you know that's the item you're after and when you go to place it, you can find it. In terms of retrieving it, you can obviously next to the item name, see an arrow and a number. The number represents the distance towards the center of the object and the arrow represents the direction that object is from you. This is gonna be important because although you can pick it up just by clicking on the item, sometimes some areas you may decide to place an item under the floor, for instance, in lightings, so it lights through the floor, or you may just lose an item out of range. It's gonna be the only way to collect it back, so do keep that in mind when you're doing that stuff. So let's assume that I wanna take up this plank. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on it, that will activate the plank, and I'm gonna put away. It's really that simple. And you'll notice that plank has now disappeared. So that's how we take an object back. How do we place it down? Let's go on to browse, we go on to place, and then we select the object in particular. So in this case, it's structures, planks, or should I want to do that a different way? I could search rough plank, and then we click the object. A few things we can then do, we can turn the item with one and two. We can tilt the item with three and four, and we can spin the item with five and six. You're gonna use those in different circumstances, fine when you need them, but more often than not, you're gonna be able to move simply by adjusting your camera angle, and that's gonna make your life as easy as possible. Now, something you'll hear see here, which I've done intentionally, is that items will often clip through the floor. So often you're gonna to have to find the sort of place where you can move an item from, and it really will depend on the house the direction and things. It can be a little difficult sometimes. So just have patience with certain sceneries and certain houses in terms of actually moving the item. Should it prove a problem, a nice simple solution is to take the item away, go on to browse, go on to place, and it will refresh at its original state so that I can move that through the different mechanisms which I'll discuss below and place it. I've explained tilting. Now we can move zooming in and zooming out to do that. All you gotta do is the scroll wheel. So just scroll in your mouse and that is how you're gonna move that. If you don't have a scroll wheel, I believe you can change the keybind on that, but just keep in mind that it might be a bit harder, so I suggest getting a scroll wheel for your mouse. Finally, last but not least, to place that, we click the button. But before we do that, we need to see this thing called surface drag off. Now what that means is it's gonna place an object so it touches the ground. That's gonna be important for objects such as target dummies, and I will discuss those in a sec. Um, because we need those to actually be usable. So let's just place the plank there. I'm likely to take these out in the future and move out of this editor to our target dummy. So you'll see, if I click this target dummy and lift it in the air, it will go, if I can get it in the air, yellow. Yellow means it is not usable. Green means it is usable. So by getting it in a position where it's usable, people can now use that and attack it. Otherwise, it would not be usable. That's where your surface align could be really good. It can help you align surfaces together. Final thing then to mention, I believe, is how you want to get up to places. There's a few key blocks. The first one you saw is a plank. The second are these rocks. These are easily bought in most vendors. I would normally buy them in Reaper's March or Hughesbane. Um, Hughesbane has a slightly nicer light rock. You can get it elsewhere, but it's not quite as light. And then the planks you can buy basically everywhere in normal vendors. But these are going to allow you to get height. Height is going to be really important for moving items in higher areas because it could be a right pain in the ass. So let's imagine I wanted to move that orb. From the floor, it's gonna be impossible, nearly impossible to move that, but from up here, we get the height to do so, and you can make all of these structures. I think that explains everything. So, if there was anything I missed, if you've got any other questions about the system, feel free to let me know. If the video was useful, or if you just enjoy my sexy English accent, please hit the like button, keep that channel growing, and drop a subscription if you'd like to see more of this content any guide, any video, name in the description, it will be made. I'm a man of service and I expect to be a lot more active in YouTube this month. Expect some more videos very, very soon. Hopefully one a day, but no promises. And of course, if you would like me to do a house tour video, I can do that. You've had a little overall overview of the house. This is related to my trade guild and everybody has access to it if you are in there. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out and I will see you again.